Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and a new guide around Imperator Rome. And today I'm going to talk about five mods that I consider as great mods. Some of these truly essential mods for an Imperator Rome gameplay. Mods are things that in strategy games, I feel like in particular, can just take a good game to great or excellent and great to amazing. So finding some good mods that can really add to your gameplay, be it graphically or immersion wise, or even completely overhauling the game to make it something completely new for you, I think uh, adds so much more playability. Some of these truly, truly amazing games. I tend to be a relatively vanilla player, but I've come more and more around to mods over the last few years. And as such, there are a few that I consider really essential for certain games that I play uh, to, to give me what I'm looking for. So, uh, before we get into these five mods for Imperator Rome, please don't forget to hit a like uh, and leave a comment. If you enjoy any of these mods, let me know if you've tried them, if you haven't tried them, you want to try them out. Links to all the mods will be down in the description. Don't forget, if you are new, and not yet subscribed, think about hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future Imperator Rome, Crusader Kings, or any other strategy and RPG gaming content. So that's out of the way, let's get into the first mod. So the first mod I wanna talk about is a very simple, but to me completely essential mod, and that is the Gray Neutral Units mod. A very, very, very simple mod that changes the neutral unit color from dark red to light gray. You can see here, for instance, this is the Oriosian Revolt, first levy of Greece, and they are gray and they're neutral. In the vanilla game, this is dark red, whereas enemy units are also in red. If we look at the Romans here, they're in red. Dark red versus regular red, it's hard to tell the difference for me, especially at a glance. But even then, I would have to look at them really closely. And I stumbled across this mod a couple of months ago. And it's honestly, I cannot play Imperator Rome without the gray neutral units mod. I don't understand why the decision was made from Paradox to have enemies be red and neutral units be dark red. Your allies are blue. I mean, maybe then go for green. But I think gray is a good good compromise it really sticks out if you if i scroll out here on the campaign map it's really easy to see uh-huh there are allies there are blue and okay those guys are neutral no enemies around here no problem if that was dark red i'd go uh is it again especially if you're fighting a large war which we are on uh this campaign here with sparta go check it out is uh you know who are these guys so this way i don't even have to think about it and if you reduce the amount of time that i need to think then you've created a great mod all right next up is a, another one that's now new with the marius update where they added the uh, ability to do great wonders and the vanilla great wonders are fun and there's there are a lot of options there but this mod the great wonders refined mod adds more modules for great wonders designs so you've got elevated thalos elevated nows egyptian pylon temple basilica julia roman theater you have a lot of different options that you can walk through uh if we look at a base Let's see, an elevated Tholos. Boom, there you go. So that already changes. Uh, then pillars. Do we have anything here that I can think of? The roof. I know there are a couple of ones here. I think, uh, is it the pylon roof? So you've got a few different options there. Then you have templates you can work off of. Um, as, as before, I'm trying to find the exact ones. Let's scroll through here. Here we go. Basilica, Julia. There you go. You've got that as one option and you can change a lot of things. But what this does, it just gives you more options to add some more uh, feeling and flavor to your games and to your great monuments. I don't use great monuments a lot. I mean, they add huge buffs, but they cost a ton of money. But if you like to use great wonders, 
then the Great Wonders Refined mod is definitely the one for you. Now this next mod, mod number three on this list, is one that adds a lot of immersion to the game, and that is the Old World Armory mod. So it's another graphical mod, and what this basically does is it adds more armor appropriate to each culture. You can see here in Pontus, this is what the Pontic levies look like. They've added for Greeks, um, Armenians, Parthians, Judea, Heraclea Pontica, the Diadochi, including Bactria, has been changed. Thrace, Odrysia, the Etruscans, Luciana, Dacian, Illyrian, Carthage, the Britons, Celtic ones, as well as Kushite. So it adds so many new looking models just by changing the armor. I mean, you want more flavor in your game. This is one that I really recommend if you actually care about taking a look at the models. And as you can see, these are from Pontus. They just look great. I, I think it looks fantastic and it just adds more immersion to the game. So there you have it. That is the Old World Armory mod. The next mod I wanna talk about is the Forgotten mod. So this one adds historical flavor to the game. This is something that I really enjoy with games. It kind of takes a very good game, historical game, and just elevates it that little bit further. Cause as you know, I'm a history guy and this is kind of my thing. And anything that adds more historical and cultural flavor to the game is a winner in my book. An example, what they've added. So two new military traditions, I'll show you uh, two of them here real quickly. Then they've added 20 new uh, heritages, two new unit model sets, uh, along with a bunch of minor changes. Uh, Pontus, for an example, you can access Persian and Hellenic traditions, so you can actually make Pontus Greco-Persian. Scythia and Sarmatia have their own heritages, which I can show you here in a minute. Messenia, they actually removed it from the Arcadian League down in the Peloponnese. If you are following my Sparta series, breaking that Peloponnesian defensive league is a bit of a pain and having Messenia removed from it, it just makes it a little bit easier if you're doing a Sparta playthrough. Like it or don't like it, I, I like it because I've done a Sparta playthrough now and that was just a massive pain in the butt. In the meantime, some of the OP nations were out you kind of blob. So the two new military traditions, the first one I'm gonna show you here is the Balkan tradition. So the Balkan tradition is shared by Illyrians, Dacians, and Thracians. And for that, I started here as Dalmatia. If we go into military and traditions, there you go. You have a Balkan traditions tree going all the way through here. You have Illyrian pirates, lightning strikes, local shipbuilding, Liburian, board sailors, embrace Italic influence. So you have a naval one and then of course a land battle one. Falks and Sika, tribal kingdoms, what do we have here? Peltasts, then Thracian horsemanship, mountain homes, which is great, which gives you more uh, tribesmen and the hit and run tactic it's enabled, then Dava, melting pot, and then down here, embrace Celtic influence, embrace Hellenistic influence, or embrace Germanic influence. Then here, when I go over to the Celtic Iberians, you actually have access to the Iberian traditions and a new Celtic traditions. Celtic Traditions, you can do Scale the Walls, so that increases your Siege Ability by 10%. Shield Wall, Strong Arm, and Embrace Kelto Italic Influence. And then down the other ones, you can do Embrace Celtic Iberian Influence right away. Or you can go down this route and do Ambush, which gives you a Forest Combat bonus of plus 25%. Strike and Withdraw, Strike from Afar, Adaptability. You can Embrace Balkan Influence, Coming of Age, which is kind of nice. Hail of Stones, and then finally, the Plains Fight With Us, which gives you a Plains Combat bonus of plus 15% and a Farmland Combat bonus of plus 15%. So it just gives you more traditions and adds more flavor to some of these other regions. As I mentioned, Scythia and Sarmatia also have gotten their own heritage along with gender equality. So Scythia is an example here. The late Scythian heritage that gives you a country civilization level of plus 5%, which helps, of course, going from a settled tribe uh, 
beyond that. Then horse archer off offense, offense plus 10%. Fortress building costs go up by 10% because they're not really fortress builders. Sarmatian heritage gives you diplomatic relations minus one. They weren't exactly great. Uh, diplomats, on top of that, you get national tribesmen happiness of plus 8% and horse archer offense of plus 10%. So it adds a little bit more flavor to that region as well. And as I mentioned, if we go down here, Messenia, they have a, an alliance with Leprion, but they are not part of a larger defensive league. So if you start as Sparta, you can go after Messenia really early in the game and then have a little bit of an easier time conquering the Peloponnese while the Diadochi beat each other up. So for the fifth and final one, I want to talk about uh, a mod that I enjoyed playing and then it kind of went away and now it is back and that is the total overhaul mod, in my opinion, the best one for Imperator Rome, and that is Bronze Age. And this is Bronze Age 2.0 or 2.0. And it is back. It has started again. Now, the original Bronze Age mod team stopped making or updating the Bronze Age for Imperator Rome, and instead they moved it over to Crusader Kings 3. They haven't updated it in a few months. I know they're kind of working on it, but I don't know what the status is there. But in my opinion, it works beautifully for Imperator Rome because you're already in that setting. You're already in that mindset. So what is Bronze Age? Bronze Age 2.0 is a complete overhaul mod that takes you to the year 2115 BC. You can kind of ignore some of that stuff up there. And gives you the world of the Bronze Age. So you're talking about basically Greece, uh, the Nile Valley, then of course really big here in Mesopotamia. So what are some of the fun things they've added? Well, a detailed map with over 7,000 provinces. I mean, you can see this map, how far it goes. It's pretty, pretty insane. Uh, they expanded the trade goods. They added custom decisions. You've got uh, reworked military units, your own artwork for the when the decisions pop up and so much more. So there's a lot here. Now, what are some of the cool factions or countries you can play as? Well, you can go all the way down here to the Uruk, which of course is the Gilgamesh heritage. Then the Ur, which is the Ur heritage. Susan right next to there. Then Azur, the Azur heritage, which culture is Assyrian. So you can try to build up that and really build up Babylon. The Mari are next to it. Then you've got the Urkesh. Dil Moon all the way down here and then you go all the way to Egypt and the Nile River Valley and you can play as a number of different Egyptian dynasties. You've got Henan Nesut, then Waset is another one and Terra all the way over here. This little island right here. On top of that, some other ones that are really interesting. Of course, you can head over to Athens. You can head down here to Knossos as the Minoan culture, and you can see the Minotaur there. One of my personal favorite ones are all the way over here, and that is Troy. That's right, you can play as Troy. We lose a heritage that gives you fort defense, diplomatic relations, fort maintenance cost goes up. We lose in culture, you've got a Sibylline religion, they are an autocratic monarchy, and this is, the, the name of the king always changes, so you can kind of ignore that but play as the Kingdom of Troy and build up a Trojan powerhouse here would just be a ton of fun. So that is the Bronze Age 2.0 overhaul mod, which I highly recommend. If you're getting a little bit bored of standard Imperator Rome, you want to mix it up a little bit. This is really a bit of a shattered world and I would recommend giving it a go. So there you have my five great mods here for Imperator Rome. Let me know down in the comments if you've played as any of them, which one you're interested in trying out. If you have played some of them, let me know how they've done for you. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. And until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.